Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the AVS Video Editor 8.0 tutorial. This is part 4 of the series and in this video we'll be covering the details of how to properly use the video overlay line in your videos. If you haven't seen part 1 of this series, I would recommend you take a look at it so that you can get a better feel of what we'll be talking about in today's video. So let's go ahead and get started talking about the video overlay line and what it actually is. The video overlay line located right here where my mouse is, is used to let you superpose video image over the video clip that you would like to edit. It does exactly what it says, it overlays a video or image on top of your mainline video. I'm going to go ahead and get started by dragging an image onto our mainline video just as an example. So we'll go into our image tab here and we have a picture of a computer monitor right there. So we're going to do some cool things with this computer monitor. So we drag it onto our main video line. I'm going to increase the duration real quick. And now we're going to start using our video overlay line. You can use the video overlay line just like your mainline video. You can add videos and images to that line. So we're going to go into our video tab and we're going to add a video to that. So we have this video clip right here. I'm going to click, hold, and drag it onto the video overlay line. And right away you will notice that the video will overlay our image. Once you've added a video video or image onto your video overlay line, you can start to change its properties a little bit. So if you go ahead and select your video or image on the video overlay line, a button will appear over here that says edit overlay. You can click that and a new window will open up where you can change your properties. You can also right click your clip and you can press the edit overlay as well. So we're going to go ahead and select our clip and press the edit overlay button and you notice the new window pops up to where we can change the properties of our video. Right away what's special about the video overlay line is that you can change the position and size of the video that you've overlaid. So our video clip right here we can change the position of it with relative to the mainline video. We can resize it and we can also rotate it with this green button on top here. So we have a lot to cover in the video overlay properties. So we're going to start with this tab right here called the attributes tab and there are many different sections within the attributes tab. So we're going to start with the draw section which is right here. And the draw section features three different tabs which we're going to cover independently. Let's go ahead and start with the common tab here. And the common tab has two different settings to it. So we have our video overlay selected here. We can change the transparency of it. And right now the transparency is set to zero so 100% of the video is shown. But as you can see as we increase the transparency the video gets more transparent as you go and if you increase, increase it to 100 you can no longer see the video because it is 100% transparent. We'll leave it at zero now just so we can see it a little bit better. The next option we have in the comment tab here is called the chroma key and when you click this checkbox it will apply a composite effect which allows you to add video overlay that will be half transparent so that only part of the video will be visible and the rest will disappear to reveal the mainline video underneath. If you go ahead and click this chroma key you'll see that nothing much happens. You saw a little bit go away there. You now have access to this option down here called the append color option. And what this does is that you can choose the color that you would like to be transparent in your video. So you can either click this drop down menu where you can select a default color or you can click in the middle of this box right here and you can actually use an eyedropper to click on the part that you want to be transparent. So if I go ahead and click this area right here, you'll notice in the video it starts to go away. And this chroma key slider right here will change the intensity or the value of the transparency of it. So if I go ahead and increase this slowly, you'll notice that part of the video slowly starts to fade away. All the chroma key slider does is it just changes the intensity with which you would want your transparency to be visible. Right now, the chroma key slider is set to 1. Only part of the video down here is transparent, but as, as you can see, as we increase the chroma key, it starts to go away. Now let's say you're having a hard time finding that right color that you want to be transparent within your video. So if you go in here, there's a zoom option within the append color and you can zoom it to f up to 500%. So if we go ahead and press 500%, you'll notice that it's really zoomed in so we can really get that exact color that we want to be transparent. But right now it's automatically set to auto size, so it automatically fits your video in its aspect ratio. We can zoom it to 100% so that we're a little bit more zoomed in so we can get a more specific color. Now let's say you don't really like the results that you pick. You don't really like the color that you picked in your append color. This button right here called the reset all colors button, that will just reset anything that you've done to it. It'll automatically reset it to black so you can pick a new color. You can click in the middle again and we can choose a new color. So that basically sums up the comment tab right there. We have two options within it called the transparency where we can change the transparency, how visible it is within our video. We also have the chroma key options which we can set a color to be transparent in our video which is a really cool feature although AVS does not do a very good job with the chroma key and I'll show you what that is right now. So I'm going to go ahead and grab, grab a green screen clip actually drag it onto our video overlay line and I'll show you how uh, AVS doesn't do quite a good job on the chroma key. So we're going to turn on our chroma key option by clicking the checkbox. We're going to press the middle of the square so we can choose which color. Obviously we want the green to go away. And I'm going to increase this chroma key all the way up to 100 so that we have 100% of the green. Now you can see uh, this green screen is actually an explosion green screen. So really all the green should be away, but you notice that not all the green is really away. 
So Avius does not do quite a good job with the chroma key, but Avius does do somewhat of a good job with the chroma key, so you can mess with it and see how you like it within your videos. So that's just showcasing the chroma key a little bit more, and that's pretty much the end of the comment tabs. We're going to go back to our other video that we started so we can keep playing with it. So our next tab over here is called the mask tab, and I'm actually going to turn off the chroma key so we can see the mask tab a little bit better. So we're going to go into our mask tab right now, and the mask tab has lots of objects that are invisible layers which can be placed over your video or image object to create a cool border effect. So if we go into our mask tab, you can see all sorts of different effects that we can apply. All you have to do is click on one and it'll apply it automatically. So we have this one right here where my mouse is over. We go ahead and click it and you can see the mask effect is already applied to it. It basically just applies that shape, which is pretty cool. There's some fun things you can do with it, and they obviously have some really uh, fun mask effects. I enjoy using this one up top here. And I also enjoy using this one towards the bottom. Oftentimes, if you don't want a mask, you just go ahead and press the null preset, and it'll set back to normal. So that is the mask tab. The next tab we have is the frame tab. And all this does is it adds a really cool border or frame to your video or image. And of course, there's lots of other presets that we have in here. So if, all you got to do is click one of those presets, and it will automatically add it. So we like this one down here. It will add a pretty uh, vibrant border to it. You can add this one, a nice cloud border. Uh, there's all sorts of borders you can mess around with and play with how you like. And of course, your video will play within that border, which is pretty cool. So that is the end of the frame tab, which pretty much sums up all three of these tabs within the draw section. The next section that we have here is called the animation section, and that's exactly what it is. It adds the fade in and the fade out effect to the video overlay. If you guys haven't seen the other three videos previous to this, we basically all discussed the fade ins and fade outs in each of those videos. Uh, so I won't be talking too much about how to do a fade in or fade out. If you guys want to learn more about that, you can go ahead and check out those other videos. But we're going to go ahead and apply a quick fade in and fade out to this video so we can see how the animations work. So we're going to add a fade in right there, and we'll add a fade out right there. So now this video has a fade in and fade out, as you can see as I slide the scroll bar back and forth. The default is a fade solid and a fade solid for fade in and fade out. And if you click the drop down menu, you can see all sorts of transitions that we can use here. And there's some really fun ones. You have to be mindful of some of these transitions that they might not look so well with the video overlay. So just play around with them and see which ones work best for you. Personally, I really like this burning fire transition because it looks really cool when you're doing a video overlay especially. It adds a really nice effect to it. So that is the animation section. You have lots of transitions to mess with. But again, you have to set your fade in and fade out before these animations actually take effect. And that pretty much sums up the entire attributes tab. Now we're going to be getting into the harder part of this video, which is called the trajectory tab. So what the trajectory tab is, is it's used to change the path of the video overlay throughout the video. Basically, you can make your video, your image, move across the mainline video, which is a pretty cool feature that they have, but it is sometimes pretty difficult to use. And I'm going to show you how to use it real quick. And bear with me as I'm not an expert in using this because I don't often use it too much. So to begin using a trajectory, you can use one of the many presets that AVS has to offer here. You can click, hold, and drag one of the presets onto your video overlay, and it will automatically add the preset. Now keep in mind that it will resize your video. You notice that this video was automatically straightened out and resized. Before it was rotated and a little bit bigger. Now it's smaller and it's straightened out parallel. So the trajectory of the video is indicated by this green arrow going left to right. You can see the end of the arrow is on the right side, so that means that the video will start over here on the left and will go to the right. The small yellow circle shows the overlay timestamps when the trajectory changes direction. So I'm going to grab a new preset to show you guys real quick what that means. So we'll drag this one, which has a lot of direction changes. You can see the many, many different yellow circles in here. Those yellow circles indicate the change of direction that this video is having. Now this red circle that you see right here indicates the current position that your video overlay is in. So if we go ahead and drag our video and play it through, you can see the red circle moving along with our video. So you can actually change those time frames between the video moving in between the yellow circles. So this might be a little bit hard to explain, but just kind of bear with me here. So each yellow circle indicates a change in direction for the video. Now each yellow circle also has a corresponding rhombus down here on the timeline. Now in this preset, each rhombus has an equal amount of time in between each one so that the video smoothly flows. That's just how AVS designed this preset. So we can actually hover our mouse over the rhombus and change the time frame with which the video is traveling in between circles. So between this circle and this circle, there's going to be this much time. But from this circle to the next circle, there's only going to be that much time. So our video is going to dramatically speed up in between the second and third rhombus, or the second and third circle. So as we drag this cursor over here, you can see how quick the video will go once we get there. Now you saw how fast it went right there. That's because these circles did not have much time for this video to travel in between each circle. 
I know that might be hard to understand. I tried to explain it as best as I could, but maybe I can simplify it a little bit better by using a different preset. So I'm going to click and hold this straight preset and it will ask you a dynamic trajectory has been modified. Do you want to save it? You can actually save it as a new preset. Right now I don't want to do that. So I just drag this straight trajectory on it and there's only one yellow circle on here. There's a start and there's a finish and it has an equal amount of time in it. So you can actually add another timestamp in there by pressing this button right here, which is the plus button, and it says add timestamp. So I'm going to drag my cursor over here, we're going to press the add timestamp, and now we have a new rhombus for a new timestamp. All that timestamp will indicate is that from the start to the next timestamp at 1.4 seconds, the video is going to only move to that yellow circle right there. So in 1.4 seconds, the video is going to move from the start to the next yellow circle indicated right here and also indicated by this rhombus down here. Now from this rhombus, the second rhombus that we added, it's going to take roughly about 8.2 seconds for the video to travel to the end there. Now remember what I told you about the yellow circles. The yellow circles indicate a change of direction. So we actually added this yellow circle so we can actually change the direction. By holding our mouse over the yellow circle, clicking it, and we can drag it to where we want the video to go. So we can drag it up to the middle here, so right now, as you can see, our video is going to go up to the top and then shoot back down to the bottom where it ends. So now we kind of made a triangle effect with our new added timestamp. Now you notice that the video is going to go much quicker here going up than it is going down. That's because the rhombus, which is representing the middle yellow circle at the peak of this triangle, is much closer to the start than it is the end. So again, this only has 1.4 seconds to reach the top then it has about 8.2 seconds to reach the bottom, so it's obviously going to go a lot slower, as you can see as I preview it really quickly. And this section right here with the two arrows and the number two, uh, you can actually use that to iterate between the different timestamps. So if you press this one, you're, it will show you the next timestamp that your video will be at, which is, in this case, it's at the end. But if you go ahead and press the back button, uh, it will iterate to the next timestamp, which is the peak that we added. And if we go again, it will iterate to the next, the very beginning of this transition. Now let's say we did not want that yellow circle to be there. We can go ahead and select our rhombus, our timestamp representing that circle. We can press the remove timestamp button right here, which was next to the add timestamp button, and it will remove it like so. Now there's obviously a bend that was created in our trajectory, and that's just because we removed the sharp peak timestamp and we can straighten that out by dragging our line back to the middle here. And of course, if you need a reference for different points, you can turn on the grid lines by pressing the grid lines button, which we've already showcased in later videos, but we can turn on our grid lines to get a better focus of where we want our video to be. Now these trajectory paths are pretty fun to play with and they're pretty easy to use for the most part. As you can change the path pretty easily and you can make them curvy, you can add different points, you can also actually double click a point in there and you can add a new trajectory point. So if we double click our mouse right here, we've added a new timestamp and a new change of direction. So you can use this if you don't want to use the plus button in your timestamp. You can just double click it and that's where your video will be. So obviously this one's a little bit wild because we keep adding timestamp and the video is going to be all over the place. Let's go ahead and change up our timestamps down here so we can make it go a little bit more crazy. So I'm going to turn off the grid lines here and show you what we've got. We've got all four timestamps, so one, two, three, four. The video is going to go super fast in between those four timestamps right there. It's going to go slow from the first to the second, and from the second last to the end, it's going to go slow. But in the middle points right here, it's going to go really fast. That's because we've condensed our rhombuses right here. So as we drag it through, you can see it going normal speed, then it reaches that, and then it goes really fast, and then it slows down at the end there. Now if you don't like any of the work that you've done and you don't want to use a trajectory anymore because you're getting frustrated like oftentimes I do, just go ahead and click this null preset right here, click and drag it onto your video, and now you have no trajectory applied to your video. So that is the trajectory tab in essence and how to use it. So now I'm going to give you guys a quick preview of how I like to use video overlay. So I'm going to go ahead and exit out of this and I'm going to delete the video overlays that we added today. I'm going to add this video that has pretty cool effects to it. It's called Bullet Holes Through the Glass, and it has a black background on it. So I'm just going to trim the video up right there, and I'm going to trim it up over here as well, right there. Looks good. And so now we're going to go ahead and edit our overlay. So I'm going to start editing this. I'm going to make sure that this video is centered by turning on the grid lines. I'm going to center it right there. And again, our background is the computer monitor, so I'm going to make it look like the computer monitor was getting shot at. So I'm going to go ahead and resize the video overlay so that it fits to the size of the monitor. Like that. That looks pretty good, I would say. So now I'm going to turn on the chroma key. And right now the video background is black. 
I'm going to turn on the chroma key and automatically the video goes away because the whole background was black and the default color was black. I'm also going to increase the chroma key to 100 like so and you'll see why in a bit. So I'm going to go ahead and preview this and show you guys what it looks like. As we go ahead and play you can see that it looks like the monitor is getting shot at. Obviously it's not the best effect because it just doesn't look that good. But you can see that we were able to remove the background kind of successfully and we were still able to put the main video with what we wanted on it. So that looks pretty cool. I like how that looks right there. So I'll keep that and then we'll do another example real quick. I'll go ahead and add this video clip down here as well. And I'll change the duration by shortening up, dragging the edges right there. And we'll go ahead and press the edit overlay button again. So once again, I'm going to turn on my grid line so we can make sure our video is centered. So we can center it right there. This looks pretty good. I'm going to resize it again so that it fits the monitor just like the last video clip we worked on. How does that look? That looks pretty good to me. And we'll go ahead and add an animation to this one. So let's go ahead and add a fade in real quick. We'll make sure our fade in is about two seconds long, which is about right here. We'll make sure our fade out is also at about two seconds, which will be about right there. So now we're going to pick our animation that we would like to use. There's some fun ones that we can use in here. I've already showed the burning fire, which is my favorite. I'll add the pixelated effects, which might work for the monitor. So that looks pretty cool. I like how that looks. We'll go ahead and add a fade out effect. I like this one right here, the color noise fade out. That looks pretty cool, especially with the monitor. So this is how it looks right now. We have our monitor right there. You can see it starts to get pixelated and then this new video clip comes in and then you can see it starts to noise out, which looks really cool. So guys, there you have it. That is how you use the video overlay line. We went over some pretty cool things over here and how to change the properties and how to use the video overlay line. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you guys did enjoy this video, go ahead and comment below your thoughts on it. If you guys have any questions, go ahead and comment below that as well. I would love to help you guys out. Go ahead and leave a like if you guys enjoyed the video. And go ahead and subscribe for more AVS video editor tutorials coming your way. And I'll see you guys.